Spirit of Life is proudly sponsored by Mattress Oz. Mattressesarus.com.au Hello, welcome to the Spirit of Life program. My name is Lucy Pace, and today my guest is Joan Ryan, who's going to be sharing her experience on how faith lived out in a family environment can make a world of difference. Hi, Joan. Hi, Lucy. Thank you for coming on our program. Thank you. Joan, perhaps we can start about um, where, just to tell us about your faith foundation, perhaps start there first and then we'll build on that. Um, well, I'm the youngest of a family of nine, mm -hmm. um, a, a Dutch family. Uh, so my background was very much European and European of um, tradition and food um, in an Australian environment. So. Um, it was a large family. Um, there were many meals around the big, um, you know, dinner table in, in the kitchen, in the big old kitchen. Um, but being the youngest, um, it's 20 years between um, myself, 21 years between myself and the oldest. So um, there was a lot of chatter and a lot of discussion. And I, I believe I was very much an observer. Um, being the youngest, um, I don't feel I had very much to say. I was very shy. And uh, with so much discussion going on around me, I didn't ever feel that I had anything that was worth sharing because it all seemed to have been said. But unbeknownst to me, perhaps I, in my observations, I developed a much more of an intuitive gift, um, which I think came to the fore in, in later years. Um, Ours was a very loving, very supportive family, regular church going um, and, and regular, you know, confession in those days, our reconciliation. And I remember the fasting before mass on the Sunday morning and my six brothers and my two sisters coming home ravenous to bacon and eggs. <laughs> um, so they were, they were happy times, um, difficult times on occasions with feeding the family and providing for them. but. Uh, but then the, the next stage, I think, was when I was introduced to my future husband's family. And um, he was one of ten. So everyone was very much more um, as boisterous as each other, perhaps. And um, even the youngest, who I related to, certainly had a lot to say. And um, a way in which uh, Dad and Mum would keep them all under control was that they would all have their turn to speak and it was a, a little bit of fun whereby the, the tomato sauce bottle became the microphone <laughs> and whoever held that tomato sauce bottle had the right to speak <laughs> and everyone else was asked, expected to be quiet and to oh. listen. So Very innovative I, system. Pardon? Innovative system. It worked. <laughs> It worked and I greatly admired that mm. and um, much to my shock and horror there was an occasion when I received the tomato sauce bottle and I thought oh my gosh it's my turn to speak in front of all these people um, but it gave me that little bit of courage and, and I guess with with maturity and years into my teens and, and so on um, I did develop a little bit more confidence and then particularly when we married Noel and I um, he helped me to understand that I did have a voice and that even though I was still the youngest in a large family, I was a person within my own right and um, I had every opportunity and every, every right to have my opinion on family matters. And so um, that nurturing and that encouragement and that love, um, you know, took me a long way and I think my family um, then realised that I did have an opinion. You had a voice. I had a voice and I had an opinion mm. and, and that was a real growing 
um, experience and, and I guess it was, was um, a gift that I realised I didn't have and that was encouraged by by my, my husband um, and, uh, and, and, and his background of being brought up in a very loving, caring, um, a, a very proactive loving family where everyone did genuinely embrace, physically embrace one another and, and cared for one another and, and shared what they had. You know, they were, there were many of them, but they shared what they had. I mean, we did too. Um, but I guess particularly the European background and then the Irish Australian background, um, it opened my eyes to a lot. And um, my dear father-in-law had had a beautiful devotion to Our Lady, um, and and I think the next closest to his heart was his own darling wife Dorothy, whom he had great love and respect for, and that just flowed onto the children. You know, the children just saw that you know mother was to be loved and respected. And, and father, but you know, mother was just precious. She was the life giver. Um, she was the image of Our Lady, um, and 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 all that um, was was very. It was verbalised a lot. It was spoken about a lot. Whereas my family were were more, um, they were they were more private Catholics, perhaps. So um, so I did learn a lot from my my dear parents in law and and my future in law family. Um, and uh, and yes, we, we, we married and had our children and my mother-in-law was very, very loving and very accommodating and my husband had a beautiful sense of humour and, um, and when we would go to visit um, his parents, um, you know, he would embrace his mother and, and so would I and he, she would ask him, oh, how have you been, Noel, dear? And he said, oh, good mum, and Joan's been behaving herself. He said, uh, I think I'll let her stay another week. <laughs> and his mother would just giggle and laugh, but then she would immediately, you know, look to me and, and, and look me in the eyes and she would say, now, how are you really, Joan? Mm. And um, that was beautiful because that gave me the opportunity to just share with her that perhaps it wasn't so good. You know, the children aren't sleeping or one of them had been sick or um, I wasn't coping in one way or another. Um, and and I, I learned a lot from her and her, um, her, her compassion and her accommodation for allowing people just to be themselves and to make mistakes and to ask for help. Mm. Um, a, f a family um, living their faith uh, it sounds like you know your in-laws actually lived their faith in they the did. way in which they live their everyday life yes. within the family. So uh, we're going to go for a break now, uh, Joan, and we'll be back. We'll see you back shortly. <laughs> Welcome back. My guest today is Joan Ryan, and she's sharing her experience on how faith lived out in a family environment can make a world of difference. Joan, pr prior to the break, you, you shared with us how your in-laws were very instrumental in helping you find your voice and having a wonderful, caring, compassionate mother-in-law, really interested in your, your um, daily affairs and you, you experience a lot of love, unconditional love. Oh, yes. Yes. So then um, uh, uh, you were married to your husband for so many years? Uh, yes, 38 years. 38 years. And now you were um, you discovered that your husband had a fatal he did. Ill illness, yes. Yes, yes. yes, he was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumour mm -hmm. um, at age 58. Uh, so neither of us were retired at that stage, although we'd um, hoped to retire early. Um, so how did the spirit of life, or God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, prepare you for that moment, uh, looking back now? Looking back, mm -hmm. yes, yes, looking back. I think um, I, I was all, we were always very active members of, of our local parish community, St John the Baptist, and uh, we, we were as active as we could be through working life and family. Um, he was a very active member in St Vincent de Paul Society. Um, and, um, and I just think through, through prayer and our Christian um, 
community of St John's. Um, and then when I was able to, I did enjoy attending the, uh, the, the prayer group, which was spasmodic over the years because of family commitments and just being tired, unfortunately. Um, but uh, when I, I did finish, Noel and I were both working when um, uh, he was diagnosed. So he obviously had quite some time off um, for surgery and treatment. And um, I was able to share a lot of that time with him. And then with his rehabilitation, uh, family slotted in, the family, um, his siblings and, and, and his in-laws. Um, so we were a huge family network. Um, we were dubbed uh, Team Ryan um, because there were so many people involved in, in his support um, because he was just a, a very, very special member of his family and, and of course, of, of my family. Did he have his main care at home? Or, or was he hospitalised? Uh, he was hospitalised. Mm -hmm. um, he was hospitalised for, for surgery. Mm -hmm. He had two surgeries. Um, and then we did attend hospital visits for his chemotherapy and his radiotherapy. Um, so, he, he, yes, we, we had hospital visits for, for treatment and there, there was many of those. And we had, um, we had many ups and downs uh, with um, successful treatment and then um, with treatment that wasn't as successful. So we had quite a roller coaster ride, but um, God was on our side because um, we had the strength and we had the hope and we had the faith and we knew that, that God was traveling, that Jesus was traveling with us. And um, Noel's personality also, I think, um, held him in good stead because he was a very, very positive person. Um, always looked on the bright side of life and um, always counted his blessings. And um, in this instance, he wasn't going to be beat. He felt, well, there's a reason for this and we're going to beat it. Um, and, and even if it means that with the medications and the treatments that we undergo, if that means that information will be gathered to, to improve research and so on. And this was the way he would see his treatment. Um, and um, we had a wonderful support network of, of, of people within prayer groups. He was very proud of the fact that his cousin in Queensland um, had her prayer group praying for him. So it was without, throughout Australia. Um, and I'm interested to, I'm sorry to cut across you, but how did his faith foundation or lived faith in his family life that you mentioned before, how did that show itself in this, um, you know, in this challenge, this health challenge that he was? Well, I think just their okay. unconditional love and support of Noel. And, mm -hmm. um, and I believe their faith was, um, was deepened through Noel's hope and his faith. Um, he never complained about his condition or his lot in life. He always looked forward to feeling better and feeling improved and having successful treatment and surgery. Uh, he was originally diagnosed to have two years and, and he was very proud of his five and a half years that he managed. Um, and so even the doctors would say, Noel, you're our miracle man. And he said, well, that's because I've got so much prayer being offered up for me and I have such an enormous support network and um, it's God's will. Mm. So how did the family, your immediate family, um, share the commitment of looking after Noel? They were very caring. Um, at times when we needed more support, because there were times when it was good to be able to just be independent, but there were times when Noel needed more support and um, they would ring him, they would visit. Um, there was a time when one of his brothers would regularly come towards, towards the last, you know, six, nine months of Noel's life. About every second Friday night, they would just come and bring a pizza and we would just sit and they would drink their tea and we'd drink our glass of wine and we would just have our pizza. So there was no dishes, no mess, but we just we just shared. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful support and he looked forward to that. And it's another dear brother-in-law, very keen fisherman. And um, he certainly thoroughly enjoyed and was very proud of a few beautiful fish meals that he could put together mm. for us. And... Um, and, and yes, and that, that was the way, you know, just the love and support. And when Noel was more mobile, we would be invited elsewhere so that mm. I didn't have the work of the, the cooking. You know, they would 
prepare the meal for us. Yes. Um, and um, many of the family, you know, sort of shared their own gifts of, of time or cooking or, or just opportunity to share and support with us and just have time with us. Well, it's very evident that the faith and the love that flows through your family has really come home to roost at this time of need for your husband and yourself. We're going to go for a break and we'll take up your story when we come back. Thank you. Joan. We'll see you back straight after the break. Oh, God, oh, God, Welcome back. Today my guest is Joan Ryan sharing on how faith lived out in family environment can make a world of difference. Joan, especially in a crisis, you know, where someone is nursing like yourself with your husband, nursing the husband to their deathbed, really. Um, so how did you manage? Your, your husband's now passed away. He has. Yes, that was three, three and, and a half, half years, years ago. ago. Yes. How did you manage through that and how did that, um, how did the family rally around that situation? Well, I certainly didn't do any of that on my own, Lucy. Um, mm. My children uh, were towers of strength and um, and m my immediate family, um, the, the, the immediate brothers and sisters, um, and um, Noel wanted to be home and um, we wanted him home. So we were absolutely blessed to have him home for two weeks and the children and I, my, our three children and I, basically nursed him and cared for him with the help of um, a wonderful friend and, um, and also the um, district nursing service. Um, and it was an absolute privilege to have him home. We shared time with him. He wasn't always um, conscious uh, towards the last seven days, um, but we kept company. We prayed with him. We um, spoke with him. We, we gave him back massage. We gave him foot massage. We, uh, we plumped his pillows. We did it all. And it was, um, it was a beautiful time um, that we shared, the three children and I particularly. And um, they, one of them always stayed with us overnight. And um, God answered our prayers. They were able to get time off work and family. My, our, our daughter from Brisbane came down with her three-month-old baby who she was breastfeeding and she just went everywhere and, and the baby was, was just an angel. So it was all meant to be and it was a very special time and we still see that as such a blessing in our lives as, as we learned to live with the fact that we were losing um, my, my darling and, and their dear father. Interesting. And now, Joan, what does your life look like now, post his death? Well, I'm running solo, of course, but uh, but I'm not really alone. Uh, people sometimes say, Joan, I said, no, I'm never alone. I said, you know, he's in my heart and, and, and Jesus walks with me. Jesus holds him in his arms in heaven and um, and therefore Jesus and Noel um, are in my heart. And um, and and there there's something for me to do. Noel had, had great belief in the fact that um, we had five and a half years of every day was a blessing, and there was a reason for him to be surviving this illness for five and a half years. And and he was very cheerful, and he was very encouraging of others who were unwell and who were within our support, our BrainLink support network, and. Um, uh, and so now I felt that um, that was something that that was an, an amazing legacy that he left me with because I felt, well, now it's for me to continue on. There, there's something there for me to do. There's a reason why I am here and, and, and Noel has already gone to his eternal happiness. And um, and I thank God for that. That's, that's the only reason I can give Noel up because I know that Jesus has him in, in eternal happiness. And that's, so what is it? 
sorry to interrupt you, but what is it you're doing? It's just we're having a little bit of time, but I'd love to hear what you're doing now. What what what? Um, well, a great blessing to me you. was that I had the opportunity, and it just fell into my lap that that the Lord wanted me to go to the Holy Land. I went on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, which was ch life changing for me, and. Um, from there, I moved into being a support person within the RCIA program, and, and, and I was blessed that one of our candidates asked me to be her sponsor. For those who don't know what RCIA is, what is that? Exactly? Oh, it's, it's the adult induction of, of Christians into the Catholic faith. Right. Okay. And, um, and then uh, that opened for me um, a whole new world of Easter. Mm -hmm. And so I learned so much myself during the... the the program for Easter, and um, I learnt with my, I, I learnt so much, renewed so much of my own faith with my candidate, and um, and then Easter itself was just, it just opened up, the, the, the whole scripture just became so alive to me as a result of, of my wonderful experience on my pilgrimage with, with, with a couple of very dear friends, and um, we had two beautiful chaplains, and we prayed every day, we had Mass every day, it was just an enormous blessing to me in my life. And um, if I do nothing else in my life, I am blessed and I am happy. I don't have to do anything else. I've been to the Holy Land and I've, I've been to the land of Jesus. I've walked in the footsteps of Jesus. But of course, you've got much more to do. What do you think that's going to look like? I would like to be, um, I would like to have the courage to be able to remain open to the Lord mm -hmm. and, and to have him lead me. And um, a few doors have been opened to me. And um, I believe that uh, when, when I am invited to do something, I believe it is from God. And, and it's his invitation to me to, to use the gifts that, that I have been blessed with, whether it's, um, whether it's just some compassion, whether it's time. The Lord has given me time. He has given me... Um, he has given me uh, perhaps understanding, a different level of understanding. He's given me a lot of patience. I was never a patient person, mm. but I developed a lot of patience with Noel and his time with me. I could not imagine need. that. I, you look very patient so, to me. Yeah. Um, but it, tell me, you, with, in the Holy Land, again, I'm interrupting you, sorry, but I, I remember discussing this with you earlier. You, it, it, you had a profound impact happen on you, to you, with the um, infant uh, what what was it? The innocent oh, the, infants. Yes, the holy innocence. The holy yes, 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 yes. That was an enormous impact on me. It was something that I had um, read about in scripture, but hadn't sort of delved into it. And it was brought to my attention that the holy innocence, of course, were all those dear little children under the age of two who were slaughtered mm -hmm. when 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 Herod was looking for for the child Jesus, the King, mm -hmm. and um, and there was uh, in the Holy Land we went to the crypt where where these children were all buried, um, and at Christmas time there is a beautiful um, model of of the infant child Jesus, and it, it's just so serene and it's got just the most beautiful eyes, and it's just resting peacefully like this, and it's probably about a three month old child. Um, the priest at Christmas takes this child down to the crypt, places it at the the crypt of the Holy Innocents, and about a week or two weeks later, um, he's brought back. And, and that just, the Holy Innocents, those mm. children who had no one to speak for them, um, may, had such a profound impact on me, whether it's my, my mothering, my nurturing, or just the innocent children mm. who I have a, a very enormous compassion for and in our contemporary life today you know perhaps you're being called to counsel those who are contemplating abortion because they're wholly innocent aren't they they are yeah joan i've really enjoyed listening to your story thank you i'm sure many will be moved by the fact how your family collaborated and came together in the time of crisis thank you for that and hopefully we'll see you again sometime Thank you, Julie. You've been watching the Spirit of Life program. We'll see you again, same time, same place. Take care.
Spirit of Life was proudly sponsored by Mattress Oz. Mattressesarrest.com.au